Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, I've got some pretty positive news about what is about to happen with Ethereum. So first up, Ether hits new all-time high as European Union's bank chooses Ethereum to issue two-year bonds. And when I see stuff like this, I just cannot stop thinking to myself, man, I think banks are really going to get blockbustered. On top of that, we'll take a look at Ethereum's price, taps fresh new highs as ETH market cap eats away Bitcoin dominance. And we're also gonna take a look at how many transactions are being done as opposed to what's going on with Bitcoin and even PayPal and Ethereum is looking pretty fantastic. So we'll go over those two things. And lastly, we need to talk about what the heck is going on with this channel and the other channel, Dan Clips, and where we're going to go and bifurcate. So uh, we'll take a look at those three things, but first let's take a look at what's going on into the market. So it is uh, April 28th, it is uh, early in the morning here, and uh, we've got pretty solid stuff going on. Uh, Bitcoin remains around 54, almost 55,000. Ethereum's hitting these all-time highs, 2717. Uh, seven day average is uh, almost 12%, 24 hours up 3%, one hour 1.6. Uh, everything else is pretty much up. XRP is down a little bit, but hey, I mean, fantastic run so far. <laughs> Dogecoin, 15%. Congratulations, Dogecoin, Dogecoin holders. Uh, fundamentals are sound. And uh, sure, yeah, Monero up 8%, 10% for Aave, 2%, 33% for Matic. Uh, if you're a holder of Matic, you can get a fantastic uh, APY uh, just holding it over there in Celsius. Uh, and that is a, a pretty great hole if you want to do stuff like that. So that's what's happening in the market. Everything is good. We're around 2.1 trillion. Uh, we had a huge drop off, but here we are back. And, and again, uh, remember, if you are new to the space, just remember that in the traditional markets, uh, a, a dip of like, you know, 5%, 10% is like earth shattering. But here in crypto, uh, we just call that a Wednesday and it's not a big deal. So uh, if you don't like the price, just uh, hang around a bit. It'll change for sure. Anyhow, let's jump into today's top story. Uh, I'm going to move this story here where uh, President Joe Biden in the United States is seeking $80 billion to beef up IRS audits of high earners. So uh, I'll release that later today, but that's a whole separate video which we have to go over. But let's talk about some good news right now. No big deal. Everything's fine. Ethereum. Uh, this is what's going on. So the European Union's bank chooses Ethereum to issue two-year bonds. And... Uh, you know, if you take a look at it, you know, what, what banks do and what uh, cryptocurrency actually does, uh, you, start, you start to wonder to yourself, uh, why do we need banks? I mean, banks are, some banks are great. Some, most banks are awful, quite honestly. They're not innovators. And uh, the ones that do innovate, I think are the ones that are going to be around for a long time. And you can see this with uh, PC, uh, personal computing. You can see this uh, with entertainment and streaming services. You can see this with browsers. You can see this with everything. If you stay relevant and you actually pick up the pace and innovate a little bit or just kind of catch the tide, you can be okay. But if you don't and you just sit in the back and just go, you know what, we're good. I think people don't mind uh, transferring cash uh, or transferring any kind of fiat around the, the world and waiting three to seven days. I think they're fine with that. I think they're okay with uh, interest rates of 0.018%. Uh, and I think they're okay with just uh, waiting around and really not being able to use uh, the cash that we have. I'm sure it'll all work out because it has before. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. And here's a prime example. So the European Investment Bank, the Luxembourg-based lending arm of the European Union, will be issuing 100 million euros worth of two-year bonds due April 20th, 2023 on the Ethereum blockchain Bloomberg reports. And Let's take a look at the at the report. But first of all, j just so you know, bonds, uh, they're just like IOUs, okay? So like um, the government can issue bonds, uh, corporations can issue bonds, banks can issue bonds, and just a way to like crowdsource and get money from everybody. And there's different ways that they do it. Uh, you can get interest rates uh, by a bond, very low interest rates, mind you. Uh, and it can be paid out at different levels uh, or different time frames, six months or a year or five years or 10, or whatever else it is along the way, or it could be due at maturity at the very end of uh, when the bonds are. But this one is special. Uh, it's all special. Now, this one is special uh, based on this uh, this quick article over at uh, Bloomberg Law, which is the one they referenced. And it says, uh, it's to your notes in an, an, an inaugural sales of so-called digital bonds and harness power blockchain. The notes have a 0% coupon 
and will be registered in the public Ethereum blockchain. So a 0% coupon, it means that uh, they're not going to actually uh, give you any kind of interest along the way. It's just at the very end uh, due at maturity. So I don't have a, a, a pass here to actually take a look at everything that's going on. But uh, to me, this is what it looks like. They're not issuing uh, Ethereum, you know, it's just they're using uh, a public ledger, the Ethereum blockchain. And I find this fascinating in so many ways because uh, you'll have like uh, a permissionless and a permissioned. You'll have a decentralized and a centralized blockchain. IBM, uh, one of those places that has a very uh, permission-based centralized blockchain that corporations can use. And what the banks did here is they go, you know what? We're going to keep this out in the open. We're going to issue everything. And you can track it because you can track things on the uh, on the uh, blockchain, Etherscan, right? So with this one, I find it interesting that they, they're doing it this way to keep it all open. And it just goes to show you that the banks are like, okay, instead of us doing all this work and issuing and keeping, and keeping records of all the different bonds that we, that, that we have out there, let's just issue it on the blockchain you know, kind of uh, eliminate some some different c catastrophes that could happen or just information that could happen and just put it all out there and put it on Ethereum blockchain. There's al also people doing this right now. Uh, it was an article I read. Uh, it, was a, it was a mortgage group in uh, Los Angeles. They are uh, placing uh, notes and uh, what is it? Uh, different aspects of like uh, the housing market. Uh, so when you close on your house, uh, they're actually putting it on the Ethereum blockchain, all the information, all the third party requirements and everything else. And I thought it was like, it's a pretty great idea. And it actually cuts down costs tremendously because they're getting rid of the third party. So maybe that's something right here. But again, if you're a bank and you're like, well, we can do all these things, but why don't you just use uh, the blockchain because it's already been done. So on top of that, uh, their issues, issuance will be managed by giants such as Goldman Sachs, Santander Group, and Societe Generale. Uh, that's how you say it. Founded in 1958. And, and one more thing, right, before I get into this, this is not just some small little podunk bank in the middle of nowhere who's like, let's just throw it out there in the Ethereum blockchain. This is a uh, uh, European investment bank, one of the largest lending institutions in the world. So when you have all these these banks really coming come to roost and going, you know what, we really need to get on top of this. Uh, I think it's a pretty big deal for Ethereum and what's going on. I mean, just for blockchain in general, right? Society General issued its first bond on the Ethereum blockchain to itself back in April 2019 in order to trial the technology. And Santander also redeemed its own $20 million bond in December to show that Ethereum is applicable for debt security management. That's how you should do it, right? I know things you know, people complain about different projects taking way too long, but uh, in all actuality, if you want to do things right, sometimes you got to test things and, you know, make sure that it's going to, you know, stand the test of time and it can actually uh, do such actions without losing people's money left and right. So I think it's a pretty great thing. And that was uh, essentially the entire article. And I know uh, I did a, uh, a video not too long ago where I talked about... Um, Ethereum being a dumpster fire. And everybody gave me a lot of trash for that. But you got to understand, I just report the news. And I didn't say Ethereum's a dumpster fire. That's Charles Hoskinson that said that in an interview. I thought it was funny. And uh, here we are. And the, the biggest thing I talked about then was, hey, look, you know, uh, there is a lot of different things that, uh, that Ethereum has to fix. I think everybody can agree on that. One of those being the gas fees. And uh, that's just one of the, the things that I pointed out. And on top of that... Uh, there's another article here, which we'll get into gas fees in a bit. So Ethereum's price taps fresh new highs. Ethereum market cap eats away Bitcoin dominance. So on April 27th, uh, after climbing more than 11% during the course of the week, Ethereum tapped an all-time high at 2706, and then it rose even higher on Wednesday, 2736 per coin. So we're at all-time highs. Everybody who owns Ethereum is in profit. Congratulations if you hold Ethereum. I personally do. Uh, Bitcoin's dominance is uh, now below 50%, 492 0.2, while Ethereum captures almost 15% of that dominance of the entire market. And then this was what I thought was interesting. It states, following Ethereum's launch of the Berlin upgrade on April 15th, Ethereum users have noticed that gas prices have dropped considerably. And I'm like, well, I've seen them drop a little bit, but just to test this theory, I just went to Uniswap and I just tried to swap out uh, a quarter of, of one of my Ethereum's for 
I think it was for Uniswap uh, in, in general, or maybe it was one inch. It's one of those two. And the, and the gas fee was 48.76. So I'm going to spend 6.79, but I got to pay 50 bucks almost for that. Then I did it for uh, one Ethereum. It was 44.93. And I did it again for two Ethereum. And it was around 48.76. So, I mean, if you're moving a lot of money, I mean, 50 bucks for some people isn't a big deal. 50 bucks for some people is a big deal. So it just depends on what you're trying to do. And, um, you know, hopefully they can fix that. But if you see what's going on here with the banks using Ethereum, you know, they don't need to do all these different, you know, wacky transactions, just a one and done type of thing. So they're like, yeah, no big deal. But if you're trying to buy, you know, on an exchange like Uniswap, it is uh, kind of a problem. Hopefully we can get some kind of like zero fee uh, exchange or something like that at some point. That'd be awesome, but uh, who knows? So to finish up on the positive, even though all those gas fees I talk about and complain about, hey, the total value locked in DeFi today is a colossal 63 billion in value. So that means people are paying that gas fee with no problems. They're like, you know what? I see the future and I'm gonna go for this and I don't really care. I gotta pay a little bit because it's gonna be worth way more in the future. All right, sure. Well, Bitcoin transactions settled 75 billion during the last 24 hours. The Ethereum network processed 23.57 billion over the course of a day. So, you know, if you're looking at Bitcoin and Ethereum, that's, uh, you know, a third of the transactions all done in Ethereum. I was still kind of surprised that the Bitcoin transactions were 75 billion, but sure. Maybe if you're doing other things, I don't know. And then uh, the last thing was, I think, the most eye-opening for me. Uh, PayPal settled 936 billion in payments last year. So PayPal, it's pretty, I don't know where you're, where you're at, but in the United States, well, PayPal is pretty global except for Southeast Asia and places like that. But uh, uh, PayPal settled 936 billion, almost a trillion last year. Uh, Ethereum settled 1.5 trillion just last quarter. So imagine that. Uh, Ethereum, the transactions, $1.5 trillion in transactions. So if you're an Ethereum miner, hey, I think you're making, uh, making like a bandit, good for you. And just to recap, PayPal's market cap is 310 billion, while the ETH market cap is 263. Actually, it's 311 billion today. So, um, Ethereum has just surpassed PayPal uh, as far as market cap. Isn't that amazing? So look, I know I talked about uh, Ethereum and I said, you know, I, I, we talked about that, uh, that article and I said, hey, you know, there is some problems up there. And uh, people are like, you shouldn't talk bad about Ethereum. Why not? There is problems. Uh, those, those, uh, those gas fees uh, do hurt a lot, do hurt for some uh, people uh, like myself, just a small time player who's uh, trying to dollar cost average. I can't do that anymore. And um, that's one of those things. Now, the banks and all those things, not a big deal. If they can just fix that small problem, I think it'd be a pretty big, pretty big deal. Actually, it's not a small problem uh, for some people, but for other people who have like the 10,000, 100,000, a million in transactions, 50 bucks is not a big deal. And uh, we'll see it all works out. I personally have a price prediction of Ethereum at 10,000 for this year. People think that's crazy. Some people think that's uh, low just depends. But uh, I still think you can do uh, pretty great things. And I still hold all my Ethereum. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our last piece, which was the direction of this channel. I think this is, uh, this is important because this channel, just like Voyager, has gone through some growing pains uh, from here, here and there. I, I must be honest with you. Um, the news is great. And it's, it's fun to report the news, but some days, I mean, I'm doing this for over a year and a half. And, uh, some days I'm like, you know, I'd like to just cover some other things and do some other things because that's the, the spice of life, right? Just to get out there and do things. So we do this thing called, uh, Trinity trading, where I bring in Alex Mascioli from trade the chain. I bring in uh, CG Reichel from market rebellion. And, uh, we just go over what we consider a good trade. And, um, uh, I don't do much trading, uh, but uh, I dabble my, my feet in every so often. And every time we do one of these trades, we, let me blow this up so you can see it. We actually record everything that we've done as far as the trade itself. So uh, we started this back in, when was this? January 6th, so at the beginning of the year. And these are all the videos that we've done and all the trades that we've done, and we use sentiment analysis, traded chain, and we used uh, uh, technical analysis and little fundamentals, right? And you can see our profit and loss. And so far we did pretty good. Um, honestly, like what was the big one? Like this one, the first one we did was really good. Maker, not bad. And this was, what went up? And the last two we did, Harmony and Stormex, um, 
went up 89 and 94% in a very short amount of time. Like the Storm X was Mar March 18th, 3.30 p.m. for 15.50. And then March 19th at uh, 7 or 1900 or 7 p.m., 94%. And uh, that's it. And we just did one yesterday. Well, people were really ticked off about this one. Uh, it was waves. And we talked about, and we caught it at 1321 or 121. It was at $19 roughly. And then uh, I got out uh, quickly because I didn't really, it was starting to take a nosedive. I, and I missed the top because I can't do that. It's impossible. And I made a whopping 7%. And uh, people were a little ticked off about what we said. And um, I just have to tell you, uh, this is there's a different mindset and I, i'm going to make sure that i mention this every single time there's a mindset between a, a long-term investor which is 95 percent of what i am and then the and then the traders who just want to get in and get out maybe make five percent ten percent twenty percent if it's good and that's what we always talk about like you know do your own research and everything else so on this one it actually took a big dive after that i think it went down another ten percent uh but it's one of those things where you know it is trading and that's uh what it is so it led me to the conclusion that this channel and our other channel, which is uh, Dan Clips, it has to have some direction and it has to have a foundation of, of which one does which. Digital Asset News Clips is not a great channel. It's not. Because it's what it is is just <clears throat> my assistant, she just chops up all these uh, segments that we do and she puts it over at Dan Clips. And it's, it's good for some, but a lot of people, uh, they're like, hey, it's the same thing. And now we have those markers, which you see at the very bottom along here, where you can just click on those and go to the next piece, the next piece. Whatever. So what's the point of that? Well, here's what we're going to do. So for digital asset news, I just want to focus on the basics, just the news, just the basic stuff, the things that, uh, you know, may not be that exciting, but some days it's good. It just depends on, 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 on what the day is and just keep it like at a, at a very basic to intermediate level and not too much, right? The Trinity trading, we only do that uh, every two weeks, sometimes every three weeks. So this will still remain the same. If you don't want to watch Trinity trading, there's a big logo right there that says uh, Trinity trading. It's in the middle of every one of the thumbnails that I do. Just don't watch it. And uh, we'll do two a month. Maybe one a month, I don't know. And then the other one for Dan Clips, what I want to start to do is to branch out a little bit more and look at more projects outside of the top 20, 30, and 50 and get some new up-and-comers that could really be a game changer for a lot of people. Also want to do more interviews and really kind of dig down into the more advanced stuff of cryptocurrency and digital assets to kind of bring everything together. So that's the direction uh, starting uh, right now is what we'll be doing and uh, that's it so dan clips more advanced stuff uh and then digital asset news more basic uh, for the people who just are coming in news talk about like maybe top 20 stuff maybe top 50 and that's it so uh so let me know what you think about uh, that direction of the channel and that is it for today so if you made it this far hey thanks for sticking around i appreciate it uh go ahead and uh, give it a like uh, start to subscribe a lot of things to talk about are time sensitive and that's it for today. So thanks so much for sticking around. I appreciate it.